Welcome back, travelers to Legendary Lore, where today we are going to be doing the second story of March of the Machines. Now, this one is from Chandra's perspective mainly, and it has to do with the initial reaction on Dominaria to the Phyrexians successfully invading and starting off basically all this trouble. It's basically Chandra just waiting, and she hates waiting. And there's a good chunk of the story talks about how Chandra and Liliana both hate waiting, but they're hanging out at Liliana's manor, and they kind of just swap stories and they talk to each other and it's it's just a very like fill the room fill the space kind of thing it's just explore the space the space is yours kind of thing just look at things and and try to avoid thinking about the fact that you're waiting just so much for the story to go on so i'm going to stop talking about waiting and get to it so Tyvar, Kaito, and Kaya, they arrive at Dominaria and they basically give them the lowdown of what's going on chandra at first is somewhere else entirely and she runs over and she's like oh no I don't hear Nisa. I only heard three people show up and I've already heard Kaya, Kaito, and Taivar talk. What does that mean to happen to Nisa? Is she dead? Is she all right? What happened? And that's when she gets in there, they debrief them on everything, and she discovers essentially that Nisa has been taken. Now obviously Chandra is getting increasingly angry and that's, she starts thinking of Jaya and how, she starts thinking of a Johnny and she starts thinking of how everybody that she loves is gone except for her mom, but that's kind of left out there because now she is being in, in Kaladesh, which is under attack from Phyrexian forces. Everything, everywhere, all at once is falling apart. And so she starts to cry, cry lava, which is really cool. It's a nice touch. Like liquid fire starts coming out of her eyes. She has the, her, her hair going off and everything. It's really cool. And so basically she storms out after having accidentally upset Liliana by just telling her that like is she just gonna give up like is she a coward kind of thing like and like honestly everybody else knows the best move is just to protect your respective planes and stop the invasion however you can Chandra however does not want to do that she wants to go back she wants to do it herself she's impulsive she's passionate she wants to save nisa more than anything in the world and she knows that she can save the world itself the multiverse is at stake if she can burn down the world tree as far as she is concerned that's a feasible option what's cool is that we actually see liliana's emotions here because oftentimes liliana has always been very cold towards jace but now she's discovering that jace has been taken and she's like that's not possible that couldn't have happened Jace is like he's, a, he's brilliant, and she get, like she herself is also flustered by this. But we also see all the characters go where they need to go to save people. For instance, we have Liliana, uh, Liliana going off to Strixhaven to try and defend the children there. You have uh, you have Vivian, who's also here and very upset, going off to Ikoria to try and save those people. Tyvar goes to Kaltheim, Kaito to Kamigawa, probably to f somehow pick up the Wanderer on his way over because that she'll show up eventually and. Now we have Chandra basically storming off on her own when she sees Ren. And Ren's like, hey, I see you. I understand you. You want to stop things. I can help. And she's like, what are you, like, Like you're not going to try and stop me? She's like, no, I have a plan. And it's like, well, what's your plan? I'm going to fuse with the tree. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, basically Ren's idea is that she's going to fuse with the Realm Breaker Take into account that we saw Luca already fuse with a monster on Phyrexia and how that went. This is an entire world tree that we're talking about. The difference is that Ren is saying she wants to fuse with the sapling. Because you may recall a while back during the whole Dominaria deal, when Karn was left there, he saw that there was a tiny little spring, like, like a little branch deal of a tree, a little sprout. That sprout is at the center of the Realm Breaker. Everything else is Phyrexianized, but that little sprout is still at the center of it. Because, of course, the the whole World Tree idea, that's part of it. That's how it's set up. Now, we don't really know the full extent of how Phyrexianizing and turning a giant, a little sapling into a giant tree works and how the sapling would still be inside the tree, but, you know, that's just how things go. So, basically, Ren hears the song of the sapling and wants to go and fuse with it so that she can basically try and help it. The reason this could work is because her fire can burn the oil and Chandra can also burn the oil. So if they can get to the tree and burn the oil, they can fuse with it, channel the flames and basically get everything working the way they want it to work and everything will be fine. Everything's gonna be just tasty. It's gonna be the best. That's what she plans. 
Now, obviously, there's a few logistical problems with that, but that's essentially what the entirety of their, their whole deal is. Ren also says that she's sure the moment she's able to fuse with Realmbreaker, Teferi will be able to come and help them. She has faith that Teferi will come because Teferi is such a good guy and he'll help them. And it's just really funny because, like, she has no reason to expect Teferi is going to show up because Teferi, he just got lost to time. But, you know... She has that that whole connection there, and she has that that idea of what's what's going to happen, how she's going to pull it off, what she can do, all that stuff. And it, and honestly, it's a cool idea. I think it, it, like it's it's worth a shot kind of thing. Like you you're going to die anyways. Everything is falling apart. Ren doesn't really have anywhere that she can go back to. Chandra's not going to go defend Kaladesh because Sahili's already doing that. So what else are they going to have these two do? So. They go off and they're they just planeswalk directly to Phyrexia. Like they're like, let's just go, let's do it. We're in. We're flying in. And at the same time, while that's happening, the entirety of the multiverse is falling apart. Which really weird to me though, just as a quick side note. We didn't see in the rest of the story Dominaria get invaded. But Dominaria also already had all these sleeper agents. So my expectation is that they're going to send Rona as the Phyrexian, like, lieutenant to take over Dominaria. Simply on the grounds that Rona, at this point, was left with Elish Norn. She's most likely going to send her back in there into the fray just to take over the place, awaken all the sleepers, and try to take Dominaria. Obviously, Dominaria is not going to go down because how are you going to take down the most populous, most impressive, most historically able to kill Phyrexian place there is? But yeah, this was a relatively short episode. Uh, again, a lot of it had to do with just Chandra complaining about waiting and then struggling with her emotions and then Liliana complaining about waiting and then getting upset at people and then Tyvar saying that it's okay to be brave. So there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of lot of back and forth, but that was the basic idea of the second episode. Not a lot to it, but it is setting everything else up that we're going to see. The first episode set up where the, the Phyrexians were spreading. The second episode set up where our main protagonists are heading. And then the next one is going to finally check in on Tamio. And we're going to get to see how Tamio feels about her family time. It's going to be great. It's actually one of my favorite episodes that they have this uh, from this series. So that's going to be a fun time. Until next time, travel well. <laughs>